This video is brought to you by Diamond Pacific Tool Corporation. Diamond Pacific is America's favorite diamond tool, wheel, and lapidary machine manufacturers. For nearly half a century, Diamond Pacific has set the industry standard for diamond lapidary equipment. Join the majority of professional lapidaries and choose Diamond Pacific products such as their Nova Wheels, Pixie, Genie, and Titan Gem Makers, as well as their wide selection of other high-quality lapidary diamond products. Check out Diamond Pacific today and find out why they're considered America's premier diamond lapidary tool manufacturers. All right, all right, all right. How do there, folks? It's a me. Lapidary Dave, we are here at the Denver Spring Gem Show, hosted by the Rocky Mountain Gem and Mineral Society, or something like that. Um, the same people that are hosting this host that venue in Tucson at the Mineral Mile where Sprite bought those Namibian amethysts. Um, yeah, where I showed that box of Sudralite for like $800. This is in some kind of hotel. I'll put the information up on screen now. Uh, it goes till Sunday, until 6 o'clock on today, which is Friday, and tomorrow on Saturday, 5 o'clock on Sunday. It looks really good already, honestly. Uh, looks better than most smaller shows, to be honest. Already we can see some really cool mineral displays from some of these booths. Hopefully we can get some cool interviews from some miners or some artists or maybe even some fine collectors. We'll find out. Anyway, it's looking good. I'm stoked. We're here with Charlie Brown out of Charlotte. <laughs> How you doing, Charlie? Good, how's it going? Dude, you have a great spread. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, Full of love. Working hard. Um, so, how long have you been in the industry? I'd say probably since like 2000 and... There's a lot of 2000. It's been about <laughs> yeah. 10 years now, so... Heck yeah. Is it your full-time gig? No, no. I'm a like full-time drone pilot and like what? survey technician and stuff. Oh, man. Yeah. And then stones, <laughs> yeah. You have some great stuff. Thanks, man. I Is this it. um Rotocrosse? Yeah, that's a bunch of South African and Peruvian. I kind of like to put them together to show people how they give each other a run for their money. Like, uh, kind of quiz people on where they think if it's South Africa or Peru. Cause so I would think that's South African and that's Peruvian. Well, am I wrong? These are all different on here. Oh, okay. And out here, they're different. Okay, too. upper right, maybe Peruvian. You mean all the way over here? No, all the way down here. Uh, right here? Down and up here, like the nice big tall crystal. Yeah, am I wrong? Um, so the front one is Peru, back one is South Africa, front one is South Africa, Peru, South Africa, South Africa. The South African clusters are spectacular. <laughs> yeah, I really like whenever they get like the truncated tips and yeah, really good color, the wheat sheaves. Oh man, that is fantastic. Thanks, man. Is this from uh, Namibia? Yeah. So I've heard that some of those can have in hydros. Is that true? Yeah, both of these do. This one and this one. This is the best brand burger. This is a good boba sub. Can I tell you to take it out? I don't need to hold it. Yeah, you can hold it. <laughs> no, you hold it. You have better hands than me. Um, I don't know about that. Let's see. Yeah, see, there's multiple bubbles. I'll, I'll give it a run. I'll give it a shot. Let's see if I can. Oh, wow. They were all over the place. Yeah, that's one of the best ones I found. I had to get that from a good buddy. That is Kind of lined it up for like a year out. You know, I said, don't get rid of that. Put it on the back shelf. Sometimes you got to do it like that. Oh, definitely. You know, the good rocks take you a while to stack for it. And uh, if you have good friends, then you can do it that way. Right, yeah. <laughs> I like how the mineral community kind of supports itself. Like business goes around with the dealers. And oh, definitely. Yeah. Hey, brother, what is this? Is that big? Yeah, that is a light. really funky piece. You guys want to wait? Yeah, let's wait. All right, check this guy out. This is a one-time rarity. Let's see. I'm going to guess this piece is like... <laughs> this might be like 60 keys. Right. What do you Check think it out. weighs? 
Well, check yeah, it yeah, out. Yeah, try it. yeah, let's see. <laughs> I'm probably way off, dude. I'm I'm probably way off. It might be more like 80. Oh, I'm gonna go with 80. Yeah. Yeah, it could be 100. <laughs> 75. Overload. It's way more than we ever thought. <laughs> so, I can't price this for you right now. My buddy did not give me a scale to process How things. How far does that, that scale go? Um, I think this one goes up to like 400, I think. I've never been good at this, maybe waiting. Yeah. I wish I could help you on that one. If you want a smaller one, you know, I could probably pull it off. So, what is this? Alright, so that's a really crazy piece because... It's different. It's a uh, multicolor fluorite, and then you have the hematite included quartz, like the DT quartz. This is from, it was labeled Arango, and I go around to a lot of the older collectors at shows and ask them their opinions on it, and they like to say that it's like Orange River, possibly, but I tend to stick with labels when they come with them. So it's Arango for now. Where is that from? There's a couple of good ones. Yeah. Yeah, stunning. Yeah. That is amazing. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Yeah, Aranga is amazing, dude. Aranga really produces oh, yeah. some great That's stuff. That's an expensive one of the best I've seen. Question. Oh, uh, yeah. The zone floor, what's inside of it? The ochre, you mean the phantoms? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it has like the nice purple corner phantoms and also the central ones. Yeah. That's an Okarusi piece from Namibia. Really, really good one. How much is yours? that incredible amethyst? Uh, that one is not for sale. There's a few in this case that are not for sale. That one, I don't someone had to pry out of my hands too. There's a few of them like that. You gentlemen have great taste. Yep. <laughs> Some yeah, pool de more trade. I have a lot of friends that like to cut this stuff. So these are his friends. I actually stopped here to chat with him a little bit about this. I was going to chat with him about the pricing on Moldavite and maybe what to look for when it comes to different qualities and price ranges, but these are not his. And then I was going to ask his friend's opinion on the Colombian and if this was Colombian. Uh, I kind of thought maybe it was, but I don't really know. These are 24 gram. Um, honestly, at the Holodome in Tucson two years ago, you would see stuff a lot less green going for $24 a gram. Um, and that was the best price I found there. These are 16 a gram, quite a bit lighter. Definitely check out the Vault of Fine Gems and Jewelry. On Instagram and Facebook, Charlie Brown here has amazing material. Really cool guy. Yeah, I'm gonna miss Radioactive. 
I want to eat them and get superpowers. I love radioactive minerals. Andersonite? From New Mexico, makes sense. <laughs> Boltwinite? From Utah. I love the sign. Careful, this is very radioactive. You think very, very? Yes. Like if you touch the raw with your hands, you should go wash your hands. I shouldn't lick my fingers, I know. <laughs> I would suggest it. Don't make a tincture out of it. It's awesome. Well, on the uh, detector, these go pretty hot. Spicy. Spicy. And the carnitites are in a bag, so that blocks a bit of it. Are those particularly radioactive, which is why they're in a bag? I just didn't want to mess with them. <laughs> no, I hear you. That's fantastic. I love the display. It's so just, if you like radioactive materials, you can, I just, uh, I love it. it. really hot one? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, keep in mind, this is through the glass. Ready? Mm-hmm. Dang. Kuprosklodowskites. Kuprosklodowskites? Yes. What a name. From Congo, huh? What is the radioactive material in there? Uh, what is the radioactive material in the Kuprosklodowskites? Uh, no, I can't remember. It should be easy enough to find online. It's oh, such a unique definitely. name, you know? Thanks for sharing. That's fantastic. If you don't mind me asking, where can normal people find Geiger counters? You can get one of these online. They're probably it is like 60 a RDX Nuclear is the brand. Cool, because I, I hear like some like don't know which one to get. Some can be over a thousand dollars and this is an ancient one from like the seventies. <laughs> oh so cool. It, Thank you so much for sharing. Don't get the little they've got these little probes that they you can plug into your phone. Mm -hmm. You actually have to hold it against the mineral for like five minutes before it'll even go to eat. Oh, lame. <laughs> I had a friend talk to me into it. I'm like, oh, stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> yeah, I tried to mark all my radioactives so that people don't just mess with them. This one's kind of neat. This one's not real hot, but it's a little. In my oh, no, opinion, it's pretty hot. In, in my opinion, any spice is fun. You know. And these. What are those? Hey, Roger. <laughs> The monazonites are all red dot ones. And I think this is the hot one. This one's the Urana. Nope, not too hot. That one. Oh, nice. Castellite. Depends where you put it, too, because it has hot spots. I want a Geiger counter. <laughs> they are this came in a collection that I purchased, and it's like, ooh, cool. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. Brandon Hauk, the owner. Some real fine minerals here. Beautiful calcite. From Elmwood. They seem to have a lot of stuff from Elmwood. Maybe we can ask the gentleman a little bit about Elmwood. Um, yeah, it seems to have a lot of stuff. If you don't mind me asking, I see that you folks have a lot of stuff from Elmwood. Is all this from that place in Tennessee? Yeah, all this. I mean, not this. A couple pieces are. Is it a private mine? It's a zinc mine. It's yeah. It's a. There's no. They haven't allowed a geologist or you know like a professional mineral specimen collector in there in quite some time. So. Do you folks do the mining? No, you got to be. A, a, a zinc miner from the from the area. Um, oh, wild! Yeah, a lot of the stuff that's out is just out, you know. It's, so, is this all older stuff? Yeah. No way. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of it's just people, you know, miners have collections that work there, and they get old and they give it up, or you know, people people they just bought it up over the years. It used to be auctioned, you know, in the seventies, eighties, nineties. They take it to auction, and whoever bought those would take them to Tucson. But there was lots that came out, but it's becoming less and less and less. You know, so. Um, is there anywhere folks can find you online? Like yeah, on Instagram? Uh, on Instagram, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Mighty Earth Minerals. 
I feel like I recognize the voice. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I try to film unique stuff and this is just spectacular. Awesome, yeah. I compared it. to like a lot of things not to be offensive to like right. soapstone cat and like right. you know bumblebee jasper sphere sellers and stuff right, but right. this is i appreciate it man. like you're not just buying something like this stuff isn't just purchasing art it's yeah. also an investment yeah that's how I you know what it. i mean it, yeah when this mine closes for good you know which is one of the lowest producing zinc ore mines it's like 3.67 percent where most mines are at least 10 percent of what they're Collecting and the sphalerite is what contains the zinc. It's one of the zinc ores. Um, so, when it's, but it's incredibly low. So, you know, it, the price of zinc is up right now. But should it drop, this mine will close. And, and at that time, you know, it is no more. <laughs> Fantastic. Something to be proud of. Yeah, I appreciate it. Are you folks out? Of, are you out of Tennessee? I'm out of Kentucky. Yeah, but I can tell. You have a slight accent. Yeah. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> Um, can I trouble you? Can you let me, what is your favorite piece here? I mean, it's hard to say, I guess. Right now. You no, know, all my favorite ones are, I just, I just have a hard time taking them off the shelf at home. Uh, this is a really good one. The combos, people really love these combos. And so currently, I got this from actually the old geologist. He was a geologist there for 20 something years. I went to his house and I just recently got that one. The calcites don't really like to form with the fluorites, but they will. But, uh, you know, it's a nice Jimmy calcite. And the fluorite has this zoning in there. I don't know if you're able to see it or not. Oh, yeah. Is this your personal piece? No, it's for sale. My personal ones are at home. Everything I bring with me is for sale. Well, it's nice that you have a collection. A lot of people are like, oh, I don't collect anything. Everything's right. for sale. This is my business. I keep telling myself I don't collect. But you, I'm like, no, don't do that. My shelf at home is pretty full <laughs> for a guy that doesn't collect. I got to start admitting You know what? One day you're going to be retired and you're going to remember all the ones that got away. Oh, yeah. The, that's, and, what, that's what everybody keeps telling me. They're like, don't sell that when you regret it later. And I'm like, who's going to quit telling me this? I got to sell some of this. I mean, because honestly, there's not a single piece here that's not phenomenal. So I can only imagine what you consider like the 5%. Yeah, yeah. I, what I like, these Carthage corners are, um, this right here, is, is a occurrence that happens in Elmwood that I like that. I like any of them that are combos, you know. And the good purple is always really desirable. Um, but, you know, the different pockets spit out different stuff. So there's some really amazing pieces out there for Elmwood. And, you know, I can't afford them all, sadly, but I try to do what I can. Fantastic. What is this um, white growth here? It's a barite. It's kind of an atypical formation. You see that in the Midwest, and then you'll see some. But in Elmwood, it's, it's very, it's... I feel like there. our friend gave me a bunch of these, like, selenite pseudomorphs. Mm -hmm. And I felt like they had these little, really? the smaller versions out of... Um, Palo Verde, California, maybe? I'd love to see them. I'd love to see them. Oh, man. And um, so you folks have an Instagram. You folks probably sell off your Instagram. I try to. Nobody um, ever buys anything. <laughs> I just sell there. I just go back and put sold when I sell the shows. If anybody overseas wanted to buy, you're not afraid to ship to Germany or to New Zealand or anything? As long as they're an easy customer, you know. Right. And don't be bugging you for, you know, a $40 piece of, you right. know, stone right. for an $80 shipping. Right, and yeah. Yeah, make it worth your while. Everybody's well. I say that they don't. I'm going to. I haven't yet. I haven't. So I haven't had a bad experience. You know, that's the thing. I believe so. What a super sweet kid. I'll be right back. Incredible material. There's nothing here that isn't like museum quality, in my opinion. In fact, I thought I recognized the gentleman from Mineral City. Um, he might have been at the uh, Rocky Mountain show over there at Mineral Mile. Here's some uh, smaller ones. A little bit more affordable. That one's like 55. Let's look at that really quick. These are just spectacular. Um, is there any kind of process that has to be do that has to be done to clean these up from um, you the mud? The high pressure spray. Um, I've heard of people doing a few different things. You know, you can put in a supersonic cleaner. So no acids or anything? Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome. This is one right here that's still dirty. I got it from somebody. Essence too. You see that every now and then in the sphalerite. 
So yeah, you piece. were saying this is what it looks like before it's cleaned? Yeah, that's you know how they how they come out of there. Oh, well, do you mind if I touch them? Yeah, that's a, a bunch of these I got a long time ago, and they're priced. You know, I don't raise the prices; I just try to move them. I, I don't have the time to go back and raise all the prices. Really. You're doing a great service. Your your booth is just incredible. I appreciate it. Is uh, one thousand dollars for this flat? Makes sense. It's such crazy-looking dynamic material. I'm not gonna pick any of them up. Maybe we'll just pick one up. We'll pick this one up. I mean, the flat's a gr is a is a grand, but you could probably easily sell this for three hundred and fifty dollars. All right, let's take a look at some of these cool flats that this gentleman has. Uh, I did grab that fluorite. Um, that was in the raw, wasn't cleaned yet. We're gonna be giving that away. Information down in the description section, I'm sure I would have mentioned it in the beginning of the video. But look at that, $125 for this killer flat. Now, you can find a lot of people selling flats of like exclusive Moroccan material or Brazilian material. But in all honesty, like almost any three of these pieces are gonna pay for the whole flat at $125. It seems like it's the only one that's at that price. That is absolutely killer for what this material is. When the gentleman's not so busy, I'll ask him maybe where everything's coming from. This kind of looks like it's from Colorado to me. But honestly, I'm, you know me, I'm not a big mineral person. Yeah, this bear head's from Colorado. This calcite is fantastic from Illinois. from Australia. Hey brother, um, <clears throat> can you tell me about any of the stuff in here? Is this uh, from Colorado? I believe those are Colorado, yeah. Uh, John, I don't know much his material. Lori, do you know, she's a geologist. She knows. Do you think these are from Colorado? I think. Um, yeah, with the Amazonite, right? Definitely, we dug oh, those. Yeah. Oh, yeah, fantastic. If you're looking for self dug stuff too, besides these, there's um, Mike. And I have some pieces at the end of the table. Fantastic. But these are definitely Colorado. And this is a, a yeah. gertite coating on top. How do you pronounce that? Well, it's spelled gothite, but I pronounce it gertite. Yeah, it's a, I, that's what I, I thought you were talking about. Geologists uh, initially discovered that mineral. Is this also from the Lake George area? Mm -hmm. Is it hard rock mining over there? Or can Depends. So there's some surfaces that are erosional, so stuff's washing out. There's other areas where that type of material, you're, you're, you want to get into the pegmatite, mm -hmm. which is where you get the larger microclines, the smoking quartz, your type, things like that. Siderite sometimes is in there too. Um, if folks at home wanted to check out your hand dug stuff, would it be on the same Instagram as this gentleman? Mm -hmm. He's just buying stuff for me then, huh? No, 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 no. So there's, there's four people in this place. That's a good way to do it. Were you at 22nd Street Show with him? That's so expensive to be there. I think my friend paid like, I think 10 grand for a 10 by 10 one year. 
then you gotta eat and you gotta sleep <laughs> yeah. yeah this is a crazy deal for this flat i really should buy this before someone else does it's probably the first like hour and a half of this show fantastic that is such a great deal for this material look at this copper it's obviously from michigan really clean a little stuck to the um cotton there here's a cool amazonite a little bit paler but i love all the different variations of the lake george stuff amazonite park Those are cool, huh? Yeah, I've never even heard of these. Really? Sweet. You want one? Maybe. You gotta pick out a good one for your birthday. Where they? They're from Illinois, huh? Sparta, Illinois. Yeah, pick a good one out. You know, I don't always just like the big ones. I like the little ones, too. You're like, I don't care. I just want the shine. <laughs> That's a very good Veracruz cluster. We're here at Ethan, Ethan Schultz's booth with Reno here. Uh, Reno's a sculptor waiting for Ethan to get back. And Kayla pointed out some cool 50 cents a gram material. And uh, um, yeah, I did not want to spend money, but this beautiful piece of Aztec, um, yeah, Aztec lace. It's just killer. Look at that. We gotta pick out the phosphates. Kayla did pick up, I mean, show me some of the green. Green over here. So when I see stuff like this, you know, you can tell it's been cut, sliced, and processed. It's not what I see, it's what I don't see that I know that people have at their house that I want. <laughs> like, you, like, you're selling that for a dollar a gram? Where is the other stuff? Right. The rest of the rock. All right, so it's probably eight grams, maybe. No, six grams. Yes, sir. This is Ethan right here. Ethan. Ethan. Hey, man. Hey, Fantastic man. work. Thank you. Um, I'm going to pick out some of your some of your turquoise here. Uh, but then, if you don't mind, I have a YouTube channel called Lapidary Dave on YouTube. I'd love to interview you if it's okay. Because you do great work. And uh, it's definitely above average. And if you don't mind. <laughs> the gimbal. The gimbal. <laughs> Who makes that? Um, this is uh, DJI. I can, if you have a phone, oh, yeah, yeah, DJ Osmo is the one you want. Oh, yeah. Grab this scale, because this goes a little bit easier for me than that one. Um, I guess that is the trend. That's a weird looking one. It's on carrots right now. Let's do a little grams. Fifteen dollars for that one? Not bad. Uh, oh damn, I'll take it. <laughs> Let's see what else is going on in here. Definitely a cool mix, but a lot of stuff I do not recognize at all. That almost looks like some Gold Hills or um, maybe Sonoran Gold. Crazy Botchwiddle piece. Have you ever seen any Botchwiddle turquoise? No. Definitely, you know, when you buy a lot, like a bunch of material, you'll get some of those. You can't really cut them. So it's like you sell them as a specimen for someone. Purple? No, no, it just, when it's in cab form, you, you, you're, you're kind of, it, it's a specimen. Like to get down to where it won't be pocky like that. Um, you waste a lot of material. I should just buy this whole dang thing. I'm gonna beat myself up for not doing that. That's a cool piece of Verisite. 
Lina Verde. It's a one dollar gram. Let's go over here to the stabilized stuff where Davy can afford. <laughs> Some cool looking stuff. I don't like it when it's too blue, like um, like that. I'm not really into that color blue. Some people are. This is a sleeping beauty look right there for sure. That's I would bet my bottom dollar that's what that is. Not my cup of tea on uh, the material. Well, Sleeping Beauty is not my favorite. But it is a lot of people's favorite. Sleeping Beauty, Kingman, Royston, um, oh, Sleeping Beauty, Kingman, Royston, Bisbee are the turquoises that people that don't know turquoise know. That's a sweetie too. I'm not going to make you hold it all day, Kayla, I promise. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm liking the one dollar a gram stuff a little bit better. It looks like it's all natural. It's a piece of Royston right there. Piece of that green. Yeah. Is it Damali or something? I don't mm -hmm. know. Kayla knows, but she won't tell me. Okay, All right, I'm gonna do this off camera, I think, because there's a lot to look at. That is a trippy piece right there. Ethan Schultz, jeweler and lapidarist. How you doing, my friend? Doing good. Doing good. Uh, so you're from here in Aurora, you said? Yes, yes. And this is your first year Thanks. selling? Uh, first time doing a big show like this. Yes. Oh, dude, you're doing great. <laughs> you got great stuff. You're an amazing artist. Um, what caught my eye is when I was walking by, I could just tell instantly that all of these were made here in the States by American style cutters. You know, they're, they're great cutters in Jaipur and Thailand and the Philippines and stuff. But all of these, you can just tell that they weren't just polished and um, well, shaped, pre-polished, and then shined with the same chrome oxide like you'll see from overseas. Each one of these were worked in their own way. Different compounds, perhaps even slightly different techniques to get your girdles and your domes. You're a great artist. And I didn't know you were only doing it for about four years. Four years, I believe, yes, yeah. Um, I started with some really simple machinery, but I've, I've been trying to work my way up to some nicer stuff. There's thousands of hours here. Yes, yes. <laughs> you ever work late into the night? Oh, man. Many days, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. And so, uh, yeah, you know, he's zamming the things he needs to zam. He's using cerium on things he needs to use cerium. If you don't mind, I'm going to pick one up. Yeah, of course. Um, the Velcro is brilliant. Yeah. That is brilliant. If you look, perfect domes, perfect girdles. These are intended for jewelry. They're fantastic specimens if that's your thing and you want a nice tray full of nice high-end material, but you're doing a great job. Uh, you said you were self-taught? Yes, yes, that's correct. Right. And just some great friends to pick their brains on or all online or? Um, I've had uh, a friend who had a flat lap and he let me come over and just polish on a flat lap, just flat stones. I, I didn't uh, do any domes at that time, but uh, I just kind of fell in love with lapidary. I, I have been collecting stones for six years or so, but uh, it was the polishing and cutting stones that I really fell in love with. And honestly, I think my favorite part would be the slabbing process because I get to be the first person ever to see what's inside a stone and I get to choose how I want to cut that stone for jewelry. Oh, fantastic. And it's exciting every time, even if you've slabbed a hundred of that same piece of material. Every piece is different. Like carnelian, I mean, it's probably my favorite stone, and I've got two trays of it over there, but every piece has different colors, different patterns. Uh, you know, same with Montana agates. I just love agates and things that have very distinct patterns that I can work around and kind of Did you shape. Did you learn on agates? 
Yes, I, I, yeah. The first stone I actually cut was uh, watermelon tourmaline slices. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so those were when you were making things flat still then? Yes. Well, that makes perfect sense. You don't really want to cab those. No, no. Uh, you could, and I've been tempted, because <laughs> uh, I do like to work with uh, unconventional or strange materials, or even make my own materials to cut, but... Yeah, agate's, yeah, agate is a discipline. It's a it, kung fu. It, it, takes <laughs> it's hard on the wheels, it takes time, but the patterns and agates and different chalcedonies are just amazing. Oh wow, you're doing great. And um, nowadays you're working on a homemade machine. Yes. Made by uh, your friend here. Uh, well, his his uh, father, I believe. Oh yeah. wow. And I think that, you said the 50s or 60s, I think it was. 60s. 60s. If you don't mind, I'd love for you to text me a picture of it yes. so I could share what it looks like. Of course. Um, on my channel, we're always encouraging people to try to make their own if they can't afford it, you know. And if you make your own, you, you make some money, you go out and you buy a nice Titan or you oh, buy yeah. a Diamond Pacific Wheels. But if you're just sitting around wanting to cut, that's not helping anybody, <laughs> you know. And uh, so it's probably just like some pillar blocks. The hood looks fantastically designed. The thing it was made, it was amazing how it's designed. But yes, it's a beautiful piece of uh, equipment. And then you get beautiful stones out of it because of, I guess, the refurbishing that Ethan and I did on it worked out really well. How the heck do you go about making that? <laughs> uh, very carefully. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh I, my I goodness. Like long skinny pieces. I thirty dollars? That is ridiculously cheap, dude. You can't get lunch in Denver for thirty dollars. <laughs> dude. Um, I like cutting a lot of very long cabochons that are pointed. I like to call them long and stabby caps. Um, this piece here, I, I just love that long teardrop shape just long accentuated detail pieces. Oh yeah. Have you ever gotten it? Oh, you, so you are in, you are making some jewelry. You showed me some of the pictures of the rings and yes, stuff you made yeah. in the bangles. If you don't mind, I'll trouble you to send me some pictures of yeah, those of course, too. Yes. So I could share, because they're fantastic. Yeah. It's like really fine jewelry style, like sell it in LA or Santa Fe style. And they'll take a total, just intimidatingly beautiful, rich lady to wear those things, man. Oh <laughs> they're, they're quite the statement piece, but I enjoy them. I, uh, I was trained as a, uh, silversmith as well so i can do all of that silver work but uh, stone is really where my heart's at um these contour carves did you do these i did do that uh, really back, yeah back when i was doing some carving i was interested in that uh i never got particularly good at it and never get got... out of town dude this is great <laughs> the polish could be so much better uh I've... I'm good with the flex shaft, and I'm good at carving, but I'm not good at polishing the flex shaft. So. Well, in my opinion, you kind of just did like 98% of the work, you know, like the polishing is easy because you don't, most of the time, you don't have to worry about misshaping your piece or something. And, and polishing, well, you can, depending on the tools you use, you know, something you can get a water polish can, but sometimes ruin your piece, but you never stop getting good at polishing. There's no end to, polishing you know like a hundred a million grit is not the end if you don't want That's it to true. be it's true i heard this story of this gentleman who won uh, a tucson competition he was russian and he wanted a better polish and somebody told him to just take magazines the shine of magazines and it's like a clay and he just hand rubbed his piece for months end up winning <laughs> i don't know if that little effort that that great effort for that little bit of polish made him win but like you can never stop and um, as long as it's got that water, like that water, glassy, just reflective uh, polish, I'm, I'm happy. I tell people um, if you can get it wet and then it doesn't change color, that's the yeah. beginning of a professional polish. Yeah, yeah. Now, if you can see yourself in it, that's one step further. And it just keeps going on and on and on. And you're every single piece here is if just you stunning. If you a fine flashlight to it, like a pen light, and you can't see any scratches, then. I think that's a good indication of good polish. Stuff that doesn't work out for you, do you put them aside and you come back to them later? Or do you think like... Uh, it depends. If it's something I'm very interested in, I will come back to it. Otherwise, it just goes into my scrap bucket and I just want to get rid of it. I throw them in the yard. <laughs> my yeah, friends yeah. come over and they hound my yard. <laughs> but I'm, I'm happy that um, you give it time because sometimes I don't. I just throw it away. Is this, is it really depends on the piece. Some pieces I've had to come back to. Scary green is 
really nicely done. Not an easy material to cut. No. You know, it's not a wood. I thought it was. It's not a wood. It's a, it's a, it's a jasper, but it's not a wood. I talked to the, some folks in quartzite who mine the material. For real. And they're really passionate about letting people know it's not a wood. I mean, I learn something new every day. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, you're not afraid to work big. Oh no, I love big. As I've seen from that bangle, that's... What is this? It is fluorite uh, out of really? China. Uh, Henan province. I probably butchered that, but... Uh, I saw this giant slab that people were... That they were selling it as a specimen piece, and it was nice and polished, and... I was like, I want that. I, I did my rounds, I finished shopping, and, and it was still there, so I got it. And I'm glad I did. Wouldn't be surprised if whoever gets that might even put it in a sculpture or something. Oh my gosh, yeah. Like, it, that's a killer, killer piece. And, um, <clears throat> do you ever, you go hounding your own material, right? Um, uh, not as often as I'd like to. Oh yeah, you're probably busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you have killer material here. Um, before I forget, you guys were talking about a material from Creed I've never yes. even heard of before. Sabo? And, um... Whoa, that's it as well? It's it lace well. with amethyst. It is. Yeah, that I is incredible. It's also referred to as amethyst lace agate. Right. Oh, you have a bunch of it. Mm -hmm. Now, these pieces I sourced many years ago and went and um, dug them up. So, my dad and his friend Tom, who built the machine that Ethan has, mm -hmm. who are part of the Denver Gym Mineral Guild, and they were founders of that in, in the 60s and uh, 50s and 60s. We would go to Creed. We would go to uh, a lot of places. Eden Valley, we'd get petrified wood. We'd get things like that. So, Does the guild still exist? It does. The oh, Denver that's fantastic. Guild. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, Ethan is probably going to do a show with them in, in September. September. Yes, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be a lot of great cutters like you at the guild. Oh, yeah. There, you know, there are some um, good cutters there. There are a lot of great miners and artists and collectors here. Uh, but, you know, a lot of... Soapstone cats and and bumblebee jasper spheres people pay the bills and fill out the rest of the booths and they have their place in the industry too well, sure, but sure but it'll be cool to see a bunch of people on, on your guys's level. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love the arts. I want more people to get into the arts. It's it's just lovely to work with. Oh, dude! Heck yeah. yeah. Um, would you use cerium on this? Uh, yes, it, it's uh, silicates. I, I would use cerium. Now, some people are worried about the undercutting when it comes to cerium oxide, especially with something like dinosaur bone. I personally do not mind that. I love it. Yeah. I love the way it looks. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it adds character to the stone. It is part of the way the stone is, so why try to hide that? Yeah, yeah. I think... The undercutting on dino bone, um, I can see like for jades people don't like it. I yeah, still yeah. like it on jade. That orange peel, yeah. It depends on what I'm doing. Normally I don't mind it. You know one trick I've heard, well for the final polish, there's nothing, you, with serum you can probably hard to avoid it no matter how you cut it. But for jades, I've heard people using silicon carbide on purpose instead of diamond. I've heard that's Just better. for the undercutting. I don't know if that's true. I only work <laughs> with diamond, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. And it's like, probably you know it's hard enough to get the diamond then you're gonna go out of your way to find silicon car but it, it'll come to you naturally you'll see a you'll see like a bunch of belts and a poly arbor one day for 40 bucks at the oh, buena sure. vista show yeah, or something yeah. have you ever been to the buena vista show i uh i have not i believe is that the buena vista cottontail hmm. it's in august it's i don't know august. i have not been to that so. you would do good there i think because you're a great artist but it is a lot more like down home and the wind sucks Sometimes, oh, yeah. but I do love that show. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of shows I uh, have not been to. I, I was kind of late when it comes to getting my driver's license, so I wasn't able to go. But How old are you? I uh, This month I turned 25. Holy smokes. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you just get your driver's license? I believe I got it when I was 22. So Dude, I'm ago, 32. Yeah. I don't have one. Yeah. I never lost one. But I, And the older I get, it's getting harder and harder to like... Get I'm like psychologically like catering my life to not having one, which is bad because I'm like thinking I don't need one. You've got to get a driver's license. Yeah. Ethan, what is your favorite pieces that you've worked here? Can you show us a couple? Uh, yeah, let me see. Uh, it might just be because of I cut it recently. Uh, but this uh, spiderweb 
dinosaur bone. Holy smokes, can we, can we hold it over here? Yes. Uh, it's yeah. so damn silicated. It's like an agate. I, it, is, it is pretty much an agate. I've yeah. never seen a dinosaur bone like that before. I would have never thought it was. So I have a front and back polish. Uh, sometimes, usually I don't polish the back uh, unless it's something see-through like that. Holy smokes. That piece of love. It's like picking a favorite child. Uh, yeah, right? This you don't mind, I'm gonna piece. end it. I love you. that. Just, oh, yeah. That's a beautiful piece. Did you use a template for that? Or you just, uh, for me, I feel like that's a, not, a, not a templated piece. This is a templated piece. Really? I, I make weird templates, so. I just, yeah. That is killer. And so to get that curve, you must be using. Probably six or four inch wheels? I use six inch wheels uh, because eight inch you can't get tight curves. So right. Six inches is what I use. They don't last quite as long, uh, they're not as wide, but that curve is important to my work. Right. A lot of people think when they're going to buy a machine, oh, I got to get an eight inch machine. Oh, it's the space and it's the it's going to last longer, it's going to cut faster. Maybe it depends on what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but eventually people want six, some people go four, and some people even go to two inch I, wheels. Have I you seen would. them? I have not, but I would go that small. Diamond Pacific yeah. makes two inch, Diamond Pacific and Johnson Brothers, I think. They had a machine back in the day called the Bigfoot. It was about the size of your tray. Oh my gosh. And it had four wheels and then an adapter you take off two wheels, put on two wheels. And it took two inch wheels. And they still make them even though the Bigfoot's discontinued because people fine artists like you, yeah. cab artists, want that two inch curve. Well, time for me to go shopping. I need some of those, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are great. What kind of turquoise is this? Is that western? I am unsure about what these are. Um, I'm not very good with my turquoises, unfortunately. Uh, what do you think it is? What kind of turquoise do you think that is? I don't know. I would think, I bet you your friend knows. What, do you, what kind of turquoise do you think that is? So that is probably... I thought Royston, because the clay, the white clay, and the, the bit of the color, but I could be wrong. It's spectacular, by the way. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I do like that. that I would thing. say, I would say so. I, you know what, I, I would think that, you know, uh, New Mexico, is so your doublet it's I, so when when I first saw it and it said turquoise doublet I thought uh, the gentleman said perhaps New Mexico or maybe from Tonopah Nevada and Royston um, when I first saw it, it's called doublet over here I thought that you were just naming it that because it was backed with like a devcon but it, no it's a stone, it a stone. doublet it yes, really is yeah, a doublet. It is doublet great way to back material. I believe it's actually a uh, black jade, so I, I don't go cheap with that. Well, here's the thing about it. That stone, I don't I don't think, did it have a price on it? Um, yeah, an underpriced price, for sure. Oh that's it's worth at least $140 or more. Oh my gosh. But, um, so when you back a material with like DEFCON, right? I've never done that, actually. Well, when you do, yeah. and you have to charge by carat weight, how up. much of yeah. that is carat, especially when you have it thick because you're filling in all these voids, you're charging, if, this, if the stone is $30 a carat, you're charging $30 a carat for plastic, and yeah. so that's a brilliant idea. You're getting all your money's worth. I love that. That's brilliant. Is the black jade um, from like Wyoming or something? Australia, and it's, it's not nice. quite as nice, but... I think it's brilliant. And, uh, <laughs> these. Oh, yes. Can I trouble those. you to bring the tray out? Oh my gosh. That is awesome. These ones are not velcro down, but uh, yeah, so they are recycled circuit boards, and the tops of them are uh, quartz, optical quartz. So I do not use resin with these other than uh, to epoxy the quartz to the uh, circuit board. Are you using a special resin? Epoxy 330 is what I use. Okay, that's kind of common. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I was wondering if it's special because it, um, it's not changing color, it's not yellowing after it cured or anything. No, epoxy 330 doesn't really yellow uh, from what I've noticed, especially with stuff like this. Um, so. They're just wonderful. I, I love doing these. These are brilliant. I imagine you do have to flat lap the top uh, to get it on there? Mm -hmm. uh, no. Really? They're just flat enough to do it? They're just flat enough. Holy uh, smokes. They do have a little height variance, especially like where the metal is. But I find that that honestly gives it more grip, something to grip onto. Really? 
Let's go. See, because I would have thought that like chip right there would have been too raised to get it flat on there. But it's, I mean, that's spectacular right there. Yeah, what that's, that's a, a killer cool piece. That's a big one. New look. Um, are you the first person you know to do this? Yes. That's awesome. At, at least with quartz. I have seen resin on top, but I I didn't know that that was a thing until after I started doing these in quartz. I, I have seen a few people imitate this online, uh, but the uh, quartz, to my knowledge, I'm the first person to be doing this. The facet is awesome. Yeah, the, uh, what do you call those? The rose cuts, yeah. Kind of gives even more i mean they're busy enough already but have you tried fastening i have not i think you're going to be great at it i mean like most people some well some people would consider that calving is a easier art but you're not um slacking on the finer details of that i think oh, gosh, yeah. you seem like the guy who might get obsessed with fastening and making some crazy fantasy I pets <laughs> Oh man, that is fantastic. Can I trouble you to pull out that other tray next to it? Oh, these are yes. just as brilliant. So these are micarta, which is uh, often used as a uh, knife handle material. Oh, and right. It's uh, material or paper that I have uh, laminated together with, I just use craft resin from Michaels. Uh, so they're not like crazy high end or anything, but uh, I just, I, I saw a YouTube video of some guy making knife handles out of, uh, I think it was books actually, and I got inspired to do cabochons. And it's fantastic. It's brilliant. And yeah. and you're using your regular old laboratory machine, water and... Yeah. Uh, so these I actually take to, I believe it's 360 grit hard wheel. And then I just spray much lack. So um, <laughs> what it means by hard wheel, folks, I'm sure you guys might know, but diamond impregnated, no, diamond plated metal opposed to diamond impregnated resin, right? Yes, like diamond yeah, plated metal. yeah. And these are trippy. It's like... <laughs> Instruction it's paper. It's like Fordite. Fordite is man-made. This is like doubly man-made. Or... I was just going to say a lot of people probably think this is Fordite yeah, when they see yeah. it. It's, it's, I think it's cooler in its own way. I mean, the, what's nice about this uh, is you have control over the colors. So if you wanted a black and white, fake Fordite sort of thing, you could do that. Uh, Ooh, yeah. I didn't think of that. You are con in control of the entire thing. Yeah, yeah. Instead of having to hunt down that rare year of Corvette or something exactly. like that. <laughs> exactly. You can just make your own. <laughs> that is fantastic. What? Dude. Yeah, Druzies. I love Druzies. Or just Druzies. Any sort of rough edge on a stone. I like keeping things natural sometimes on a stone. Yeah, that's a big cab. <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard to get girdles on a high dome like that. But I it's try to keep it, yeah. Almost the dome of the high dome is the girdle. Almost, yeah. You know, yeah. like you do gotta respect the bottom. But um, I don't think, like, you're not going to get the 11 degree angle on, like, some other things. I just do 90 degree angles on my uh, girdles. I don't do um, any angle, unless it is something druzy on top where you can't push a bezel over. Right. Uh, but I set a lot of my stones in bezels, and I've never No run problem into with any, the 90? No, no, no issue. Never. Yeah. That is awesome. Like, I'm, I know it is a little easier for some people with that uh, angle, but... With the right bezel, with the right uh, tools, it, it, it's no problem, yeah. And I see you left these at like kind of a, a lower finish perhaps, or maybe is that just the nature of the stone? That's just the nature of the stone. I love it. Yeah, I have tried just about every compound and every material out there. I'm probably missing something. I probably could do better, but that's the best I was able to get. So I'm, I'm not sure. You know, something like this wouldn't even look bad in any way with a satin finish i think oh gosh no, i wouldn't it consider great. this satin but it, it would satin wouldn't hurt that at I, all i think it looks great how it is ethan you're kicking so much butt brother i can't wait to to see where you go from here and when you're a millionaire maybe oh, you could <laughs> you could shoot me some of that material you're bad to the bone my friend um so 
<clears throat> you don't have an Instagram that you're posting stuff on at the moment, do you? I do. Uh, you I just, post, I, I'm just bad about posting. But <laughs> Etsy is your yes, main uh, shebang. Everything is just Ethan Schultz art. Uh, my Instagram, my Etsy, er, everything's just Ethan Schultz art. I'll put a picture of the Etsy on screen. Um, and links will be down in the description, of course. Um, besides Etsy, if people wanted to get a hold of you here in the States, do you have any other shows planned this year? Um, I have a local show, but that's about it, and no, nothing planned. I'm, I'm always looking for new opportunities to show, though. What's the local show? There, it's through uh, my shirt, actually, the Colorado Metal Smithing Association. Uh, it's you have to be a member of this organization to go to the show, but it's going to be up in Fort Collins this year in July. And it's more about the metal smithing uh, than it is lapidary, but there are plenty of jewelers, and I, along with I believe two other people, will be vending. So it's a very very small show, and it's a tight community. But uh, I haven't really got any other shows planning plans yet. Um, so you have to be part of it to even just go to it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. It, so it's, it's, probably, it's probably a lot of shop talk there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. Ethan, thank you so much, brother. Yeah, I really you. appreciate you, dude. You're the best. All right. This booth is pretty neat. I wasn't expecting to see cutting rough. I mean, it makes sense. It's easy to take around fastening rough. But they do have some other rough over there and even some slabs we're going to take a look at. Really cool. New era. I don't know if you can find them on social media or anything, but they will be here until Sunday at least. I like that they have nice scales everywhere. This citrine is pretty cool. Nine dollars a gram. Sounds expensive, but it's really not. And these are all processed. They're cleaved, right? Or are they sawed? I think some of them are sawed which is important for them to be in water after that because they'll get all powdery if they've been sawed. For instance, these have been tumbled after they've been probably processed. And so they'll, they'll be a little powdery, so you want them in water. Yeah, these especially right here, you'll see that's like a saw mark. And so it's hard to see the color inside if it's been sawed. So it's nice to leave it in water. For slabs, it's something similar, but fasting rough is a little bit more important. These are really cool. Ten dollars per gram. I mean, if you're a fastener and you're looking to work a couple of these, you probably get like four or five of them for ten bucks. It's a really good deal. Amatrines from Bolivia. These are polished slightly. They're five dollars each. Most of the time, you'll see them to where they're trying to zone it to where it's a bi color. Sometimes it doesn't really work out that like that. But well, it's hard to see on that one. Let's grab a different one. This one, right here. Citrine and amethyst. Amatrine Bolivianista over there in Bolivia. Oh, cool. Very cool. Are they selling the catalog? Probably not, that's a beautiful catalog. That is nice. Above and beyond, you know, they really care about what they're doing. Here's some blue topaz, some people might say, hey, never seen anything that blue. Well, you can heat treat it to bring out the blue. I was talking to Adonis um, at the Tucson show, 22nd Street. I picked up some sunstones for a friend that never made it to him. So I bought some sunstones and mailed it to somebody who hopefully is appreciating a $700 bag of fine bicolor sunstones. But anyway, he was the one telling me about um, the heat treating of blue topaz and I think I would prefer a paler blue but I'm not the biggest topaz person there's some sunstones these are from India probably right eight dollars per gram making this 
Oh, probably, what, 12 grams, maybe? More, more than that. Let's see. Ah, uh, 17. So 17 times so eight. Mexican food. Drink some food exactly Very cool. I had the pleasure of getting a little bit of an education about sunstones when I was purchasing purchasing the fasting ref for my friend that never got it. Um, he was telling me that when you're fasting sunstones, you never really want the shiller. Where I think when people are making cabochons, you do want the shiller. Very cool. Cat's eye appetite. Dollar per gram. Very nice. Oh, this one seems to have a bit of a light play. Hey, do you work here, brother? If you don't mind me asking, so like on Labradorite, the color play, they call it like Labradorescence or something, right? And then there's Chatoyance or whatever. What is the co name of the light play on like a cat's eye material? I'm not sure. Me neither. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. That's all right. This should be easy enough to look up, you know? <laughs> I just, I have no idea. You just, you just work it right. <laughs> for the pretties. <laughs> awesome. Um, are they selling those catalogs? Awesome, that's great. That's a hell of a catalog to give away there. <laughs> Will you hold on to that for me? Check that out, that is killer. The idea is maybe you want something in there. Oh, absolutely. And the, I mean, I can tell by like the quality of their material, if you knew what you were asking for, like for instance, like, yo, you want some bicolor sunstones without any shiller, and I think you know exactly what to hunt you down for instead of just scooping up a hundred dollars worth of the material it's a little bit more dynamic than that with these folks i can tell you see the pigs the pigs are those pigs yeah. oh they are pigs <laughs> it has eyelashes and everything <laughs> so these must be something too. oh yeah these are owls the material is definitely soft but Damn, that would take me like four days. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't even attempt it. <laughs> yeah. Lemon quartz. Wow. Some, some Kenyan rubies. Oh, some yeah. Burmese yeah. spinel. $20 per gram. The Kenyan rubies are also 20 And the Tanzanian spinel. Yeah, so that, that stuff we were looking at earlier was um, spinel and marble. I'm used to seeing like, um, what do they call it? Oh, like the rubellites, the inferior tourmalines inside of marble. But I knew from the shape of that. So they'll dry out and you won't be able to see the color. Like a lot of people buying this kind of stuff want to cut them into gems. And like if you take one out, um, I don't like this right here. You see, it gets like chalky. Oh, yeah. Because they cut all the junk away. Yeah. And then, like, if you're going to cut a $20,000 stone and you can't see into it, yeah. you're not going to buy the rough. So they keep it in the water. It's a lot of labor, but yeah. it's worth it. <laughs> so here's some other rough gold sheen sapphire. I've never seen material this chunky. Definitely for making cabochons. You want a big gold sheen sapphire cab? $2 per gram. This stuff is heavy. How, you go you go with grams? What do you think? Oh, that's I a, think that's like a, 300. Yeah, that's got to be at least. What do you think? I'm going to guess uh, 200. 200, I'll say 300. Uh, yeah. Oh, we're pretty well. Well, you know, it's, <laughs> it's like the price is right. We both lose, right? Because we went over. You should have said one gram. Yeah. And then you... <laughs> that is, the price is right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you are right. Ain't that the truth? It did feel heavy. It does. The gravity's weird. What's up, kid? Oh, yeah. 
that stuff is awesome. So that would have been a $170 for that piece at $2 a gram. Never see any tumbled chrysoprase. That's kind of neat. Yeah, just a... And if you want a kilo of this stuff, it goes down to $350 for a kilo. Wow, that's a huge jump. <laughs> so, is it on grams still? It is. Two kilos. Ooh, Almost. Good. Yeah, so that's what, oh, like 500 bucks right there. Not bad. If you know what you're doing, you can make your money back in 10 pieces, 10 cabs. Yeah. That is awesome. Gold sheen, is that the same? It's the same. It is the same, just smaller. Orange Max Majestic Ionite. That is unique. I have some of that stuff. I, I don't know where it's from. I don't know anything about it. Beautiful material. Some sapphire crystal. 250 per kilo. It's a heavy material, but those are small, so you do get quite a bit. Four dollars a gram through these. That's a cool one right there. Let's weigh that out. I'm gonna say ten. 13. So 13 times what? 4? 13 times 4. 50. 50. 50. 52. <laughs> Tie tech tights. I see a lot of people who have these who think they're Moldavites. Sometimes they can be greenish. I think they definitely are awesome, have their own place in the metaphysical world. Ah, uh, what do they call them? Um, they call it the Divine Pearl of Fire. Powerful name, right? Is that what they're called? Divine Fear of Fire. If you were a stone, would you want a cool name like that? Very cool. Some Brazilian citrine. Is it? Heat treated amethyst? Maybe not. Maybe it's regular citrine. How would you say that name? Briar quartz? I have some of this stuff. I never knew the name. I have a nice big crystal of it actually. Iron stained quartz. There's some different citrine. You can tell these are cleaved instead of cut. I do like the cleaved ones, so let's dry it out and show you. So when you cleave like a piece of glass, right? It's super colorful. It doesn't look chalky and powdery. And so when they cleave the material, there's some cool videos of people cleaving on like a stake in the ground holding the stone with a little hammer chipping off the inferior material and when they cleave the material it's got a really cool look to it um, I think you do waste more material than sawing but if you look over here this material has been sawed so you get more of it 
but it has to be more, it has to be more saturated. And, um, I mean, a, a fastener doesn't mind that, I'm sure, like, they know what they're looking for. And, um, I do like the cleaves a little bit better, but I'm not a fastener. And, you know, you're probably wasting, what, 20, 30% more of the material than you would sawing it. Cognac citrine. This is from Brazil, right? You like cognac? What's a, what's a famous cognac? Is Hennessy cognac? I like it. Very cool. This is something you've probably never seen before. Green amethyst. What is green amethyst? So, from to my knowledge, there is natural green amethyst. To the other train, I just looks like a bunch of Coke bottles, huh? <laughs> yeah. But um, I think it's radiation. Like you know how you can irradiate a clear quartz to turn it black. Uh, I, I think you can irradiate amethyst or cook it. Somebody told me that it's like 963 degrees to turn amethyst into citrine. And if it doesn't go through the full monkey, it can be green. I can be wrong. Someone let me know down in the description section, in the comment section. Blah, 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 blah. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Very cool material. Pretty expensive, <laughs> but it's cool. When I see this color moonstone, I just think like landscape rock. Ooh, that flash. I hold it up. You hold it up and down, right, Kayla? Because if you have to hold it at an angle and be like, oh no, but if you hold it completely okay. sideways, but if you cut, if you get a piece and you see the flash then you cut that angle to be up and down. You know what I mean? So like if this was cut that way, then you get the full monkey. And the difference between the, the orientation is night and day. That's where the money's coming from, right? Day and night. Day and night. Day and night. Night and day. Let's see some of these chrome tourmalines. <laughs> Those are cool. $20 a gram. $20 a gram, they don't really look like they can be cut or fastened. You could probably cut them or something. Do you, aren't these fantastic? Do you think mermaids have treasures like this in their cave? Sure, sure mermaid treasure. I have a bunch of grape agates. Grape agates. That's the way they sound. Sensory yep. play here. Get, get another handful for me. <laughs> I like it. Mondo Smoky Quartz? Never heard of it. I like that it, the the zoning of the smoke is odd. I dig it. Dude, if I was in rocket power, my name would be Mondo. Etched Aquamarines. I have quite a big one of these at home. I got from um, the Grandma Gina State. 26 times 4. That's easy. Nice. <laughs> Some Fenakites. I Somebody told me in the metaphysical world. Um, I think it was my friend John Conoco and his friend Haley Cooper that these got crazy energy for people who are in energy stuff and it's not for everybody like Moldavites. Prenite? Fenakite. Oh, it's Prenite. I'm blind. Blind as a bat. <laughs> Thanks for keeping me honest, Kay. How do you say that? Corn. I know corn. 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 So, what is a small sphere, Kayla? It's a bead without a hole. Okay. Right? Trick question. 
That's what it is, right? Yeah. I was I was talking to a friend about sphering overseas and like on websites like Alibaba, DHgate, AliExpress, you never see sphering machines. All the sphering machines I see come from the United States and I'm wondering why. Well, because the sphering machines over there, they're not making one thing at a time, they're making like 20, 30 at a time. It's just really large scale bead making machines. Unheated tanzanite. Do you know the story of tanzanite? No. So what I've heard, I like this. I, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Unheated tanzanite, that's kind of cool. Instead of just heating them up, it's got its own, you know, tanzanite's been around long enough. The unheated stuff can have its own identity and be appreciated. So we can't buy the unheated pan. I beg your pardon? That doesn't mean we can't buy the unheated pan. Yeah, I, I can't afford like an unheated bad blue mama, but I think that's really cool. And like, if you're making jewelry out of that, I think people would appreciate it just as much. I don't, I've never even seen unheated tanzanite um, of this quality. Of the, of the yeah, that actually has this, the gray zoocyte. There's all kinds of crystals that are unheated too. You know, they really? Can, they can pink. Really? Yeah, they can only be uh, unheated. If it's pink, it will only always be unheated. It won't come pink in like any other way. So, Trippy. Yeah. I got some collection of the pink ones because. That is awesome. Yeah, I mean, I think most people don't even know that they are. And I, I heard the story that they were heated after a wildfire. Is that true? Well, they heat naturally in the air. Right? Oh, okay. So, so it's not just that fire. They, yeah, okay. I mean, you can't heat them like that. You have to put them in a special oven and you have to burn them a certain amount of degrees for a certain amount of days. Mm -hmm. And then probably uh, lose the temperature slowly, too, right? Yeah. And the thing about them with the heat, and this is what I don't like about them, is that are heated. Become more brittle. Mm -hmm. So if you're buying a, and I'm not supposed to say this, but the, the truth is, is, I won't buy one of those expensive heated crystals because mm -hmm. I don't want to break right now. Right. No, I completely understand. They might do that otherwise, but they have such a uh, better tendency of breaking. It's cool that they're appreciating just the. The zoocyte for its beauty. I kind of like the when they have a little bit of both. That's awesome. I've never seen that before. What's your name, brother? Sai. I'm sorry? Sai. Sai, I'm David. David. You're awesome. Thanks for the help. <laughs> I can't answer every question, but. These are cool. These are, have the mid wave in them, right? And uh, Eric Rinamaki, the Uper like guy, put out a short wave one. I think it sold out in one day. Just wiped it out in one day. So here are the natural unheated crystals of the tanzanite that Sai was talking about. He was saying, talking about the pinks right there. Totally awesome. Never seen it before. I've just, all the unheated I've ever seen. Uh, in crystal form were just really, really high-end specimens. And uh, I really appreciate that folks are bringing over the natural unheated stuff now. It's probably been coming over for as long as the other stuff was too, but I think that's just so awesome. Because I think the natural zoocyte's like gray, right? Really cool, friendly booth here. New Era Gems, some really cool stuff. Make sure to come check them out. <sighs> Little cotton candy tans and I, I like that so much more than the blue even. Great name, by the way, for your, you. your company. Is a great name? It is a great name. Beautiful blue topaz. Yeah. It's called a gimbal. You can get them for like 30 bucks now. Really? Yeah. If you want to know which one to get out, I can write it down for you. 
The new ones are kind of flimsy, and this older one is so overbuilt that if I turn fast, it's not gonna fall on me. I film the Tucson and Denver shows every year, and um, I've had this for five years, it's never died, the battery's not depleting, and... <laughs> This ain't wow. That's wow. That's wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, you, yeah. <laughs> you folks have incredible got taste. Some pretty cool wow stuff. Um, so this, this, is it Sarles Lake, California? Yeah, yeah. Is that different than Trona? Is that different than Trona, Dan? No, is it, I think it's, they're, they're proximal. I figured that multiple people are probably doing a similar thing. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's like, just, I think Trona and the actual town is a little south of there. Were you folks in Tucson this year? No. We have other jobs on the site. So oh, wow. the only one we do. Um, like, I, I go every year, and I guess it was a good year for yeah, the deposit. Yes, it was a good year. And yeah. something like this would be well over 500, 600 wow. bucks. So, but it was such it was a fire year wow. for it, and everybody. <laughs> and uh, you have really affordable prices. Yes, thank you. Yeah, we didn't jack them up ever, like everybody did this year. <laughs> we tried to keep them it's Chinese for it. I think I'm gonna have to buy this. Let's see what else they have. They have some great stuff. Do you take a card by chance? Yeah. Awesome. It's so affordable. I love the Moroccan hematitic glutacords. Oh, these are great and they're just so affordable. Doesn't look like any of these here are over 50 bucks. Like that, $45, that is crazy affordable. Smoky Citrine for $45, crazy. Which one do you like the most? A little bit of phantom right there. And this bigger one. Oh, right there too. And the good old Vera Cruz. I never get sick of this variety of amethyst. I would, it's my top three. So gentle. Beautiful violet. Quite a bit more than this Madagascar material. About triple the price, but it's so worth it. I've seen people who are unfamiliar with this material who thought it was like when they do the plating with titanium or something. Because it has such a different look. It's such a gentle and graceful amethyst. I'm going to pick me out one of these. Which one do you like? I kind of like this one. And kind of like that one. What's your favorite one? 
It's really awesome. Beautiful marble. Is it tourmaline? Is it something else? It's definitely not tourmaline, it's something else. Instead of a marble carving, real simple. Not too finely polished. It's probably actually a lot more affordable than most people might think. A little bit of green up there. Spinel. Oh, that's probably what's inside of there, honestly. Um, maybe I can ask the lady. That is 15 grand for this beautiful spinel specimen. Lady's on the phone, don't want to throw a camera in her face when she's on the phone. Love, love that aquamarine right there. It's a real magic wand. It's 12,000. This is a much smaller one, a pen. Also from Pakistan. I throw all this together and I'm off and here I am. <laughs> David, how do I pronounce your last name? Ratoy. I'm the last remaining one. <laughs> My family was from Europe in World War II. Every single one of them died. Oh my, my gosh. My uncle had four daughters. My dad had me and my sister. I never had any children. So I'm the last remaining one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and so breed, huh? I just picked up a piece of the perprite from you. Um, there's there's another like big source of perprite outside besides Colorado and I wouldn't even say Colorado's a big source of it. And I think it's from Africa, right? Yeah, Namibia is one of the locales. There's a locale over in Norway, Sweden. There is in the Black Hills a little bit. And over by the Palermo mine over in Virginia, there's a little bit. It's actually a fairly rare stone. What it is is the phosphate pod that's initially formed. After it's formed, there has to be hot water solutions that put uh, new minerals in and strip minerals. So there's an alkaline solution that comes through. Then there's an acidic solution that comes through. So it's a tertiary product. It takes all these different things for it to happen. It's not easy for it to occur. I'm sorry. Yep, no, no problem. Very cool. So if you couldn't tell by the card, the gentleman is a geologist. Actually, I have to give this gentleman his card back. You're helping the miner. Um, yeah, thank you. There you go, my friend. I, I collect a lot of this. And I'll leave that right there for him. Yeah, look all this up. So he also mines the Lake George material. And he has some smoky quartz. I don't know if it's from... No. Is it? I don't know anything. <laughs> yeah, well, Locale-wise. Loca yeah. Likes and dislikes on things. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. Um, so the perprite that's coming from Africa, a lot of people talk about it has to be processed with acid to kind of get it purple again if it's black. What happens is perprite is an iron manganese phosphate. Iron and manganese, if you leave it at the surface for a long period of time, it slowly tarnishes and rusts like silver. 
silver will slowly go from that silver color to a, a blackish tarnish color. This purpurite, if it sits out in nature for long periods of time, it slowly tarnishes. So what they do is you take a weak muriatic acid solution, you get about a 10% solution, and you dip it in slightly and take it out to remove that black tarnish oxidation. Oh, wow. So almost all the purpurite has that tarnish taken off because nature tends to oxidize things. Mm -hmm. Incredible. So you you did process these a bit to bring some of the purple out? With they the they were acid? quickly dipped in, in an HCL, a uh, weakened HCL solution for a minute or two just to take a little bit of the black off. So something I don't see in the African material is this brownish orange. That is another mineral. This is actually awadite. There's graftonite, there's triplite. These actually have like five, six, seven different minerals all combined together. Oh, wow. So there's a lot of other phosphate minerals mixed in. You can see all of these. I like it when you get the gray graftonite and the white triplite and some of these other ones. I think they're unique. You Absolutely. get the green awadite and the yellow awadite. Um, is it hard rock mining? Um, what happened is in the 50s, they went into these mines in the pegmatites and they drilled and blasted them for the big barrel crystals. There were barrel crystals that were 30, 40 feet long, three, four, Holy five smokes. feet wide, and there would be tons of barrel. They got the barrel for the beryllium. After World War II, the U.S. government had a strategic metal plan and they would pay miners to go get these metals so if there was a war. So in the 50s, they went in and they mined all of the barrel. As they drilled and blast, they went through the perperite and all this other stuff and they threw it in the telling pile. So oh we went into the telling pile, we would dig down three or four feet and dig through the tellings looking for the black oxidized. Sometimes you take them home, they're real good purple. Sometimes you clean them and they're just white or yellow. There are these other phosphate minerals. So sometimes you don't even know because nature has tarnished everything. So if you go out there looking just for purple, you, when you see a bunch of black, you might not even know. Yeah, you might not even know <laughs> it because nature has tarnished it. Where we live in uh, Taos, there oh, was a Taos? yeah, there's a, a mine over there, Harding mine oh, in the my county. My friend lives just up from Taos. Who's your friend? They were working the beryllium back in the day. Uh-huh. It's about a four and a half, five in hardness. Uh, I know that some people have it. Uh, awesome guy. Some people tell me that it's no good for cabs on it. Come on. Other people told me that it's not so bad. So it's not. Well, so it's not an easy material to work. It's not. I bought a piece oh, yeah. just to cut. I just bought a piece. <laughs> I wasn't going to tell him in case it was sacrilegious. Talk to the Brazilians because I saw at the Denver show in September they had some purpurite cabs that were beautiful. And I don't know who made them and how they made them. I just know that some people struggle with it. So it's not an mm -hmm. easy stone to work with. You got to. Right find out what you're doing. Definitely. Actually, one of the very first materials I've ever cut uh, was a piece of purpurite from Colorado, and it was given to me by my friend no, Jacob geez, Michael Haggerty from Haggerty Mandolin's fame, and uh, the Foggy Memory Boys. And uh, I would just go to his house and try to buy all his minerals, and he had to put his foot down one day, and he's like, look, Davies are mine. Leave one night? Huh. Is that oh, it's that fibrous material on there? It's tough. It's getting hard. The forest service just closed the road there. Oh, I appreciate it. Uh, when it comes to the Lake George, a, a, a rumor that I've heard is that people weren't really ever after the Amazonite. They were kind of looking for like topaz or something? What happened is in the early days, they went for the smoky quartz because some of it has that honey color and it was for Tiffany's and it was for cutting rough. So they would go in, find the pockets, and they would take a hammer, knock the Amazonite off to get the good cutting rough. They would destroy quartz crystals and destroy the Amazonite crystals trying to get the cutting rough. 
it wasn't until years and years later that the Anzanite had value and the crystals had value. So then people would go back, they'd find this pile of broken up Anzanites that were sitting there from where they had mined and knocked off all the quartz. Oh, awesome. <laughs> I heard something that like maybe a guy took a bunch to the World Fair once upon a time. Yeah. And that made it popular. People gave it a second chance. And well, I mean, isn't it rare? Think about the earth. It's brown color. It's dark color. Go and see blue in the ground. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that's but incredible. To me, that's pretty amazing. It is such, a, such an amazing thing. That's what got me started in the rocks when I was in college. They took me up here to find some Amsonite. We put in some Amsonite claims, and that's been it ever on. <laughs> Being a miner out of the Colorado area, have you ever seen or went and tried to find any of the turquoise that's around Colorado? It's kind of elusive. No, I haven't. I, I hear like Leadville, maybe. Uh, Cripple Creek on the oh, backside Cripple of Creek. Cripple that's still Creek. Still worth There's right. a whole bunch that comes out from up there. Um, it's not the real blue color; it's more of a green color. Mm -hmm. um, I've never found any myself, though. I'm a phosphate freak, so that's oh, my... Are you? I'm always looking for the varicites okay. and the turquoise. Um, and I the... just came back from <laughs> New Mexico, Arizona. We went down there to go look for turquoise, and the weather just turned bad. Oh, the <laughs> snows, it knocked us out. Oh, my we goodness. You did find one spot on the satellite where you can see the contact of the two rock formations, and there's a blue-green line at the contact. Oh, wow. So the one formation, the water's going through, and it's leaching out the calcopyrite pyrite getting the mineralization anyways at the contact there's a ph change and so the mineralization's coming out i think there's going to be chrysocolla and turquoise in there it's a really nasty hike we tried to get in there and we couldn't get in there so we're going to try next year david you are a pleasure and an honor to talk to you dude oh, no you're problem. fantastic and uh, you have great all your materials full of love man uh, i'm just a rock <laughs> I have an appreciation for the minerals. I do this not for the money, but for the love of the rocks. I mean, I can tell by your prices. They're really, they're fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> but, There's no greater thrill <laughs> than finding something in the ground yourself and, and taking it out. Thank you, David. I really appreciate you. All right. Hmm, that's something different, right? Cool oil candle. <laughs> pretty awesome. And pretty affordable. It's a cool fossil fish one. She's gonna kill it. A charcuterie board. <laughs> Is this Persian? Uh, the turquoise, I really don't know. Oh, nice, thank you. I thought they were Persian. There's so many different variations of King Men. They say, I think, over 40. Um, off the top of my head. I can't think of a bunch. These are definitely cut to an American style. A lot of Persian turquoise will have like a back satin dome to the bottom for the higher domed settings that they really set over there in um, Iran or wherever they're coming from. Or wherever it's getting worked. All over the place over there. It's a high pyrite content over there too in the Persian turquoise. I love Persian turquoise. There's two different main varieties. I think um, one begins with an A, one begins with an S. More information on that can be found on the Great American Turquoise Channel. I hope I'm pronouncing that right or remembering the name. I'll try to remember to put the picture of the gentleman's channel on the screen. I hope I can get an interview with that guy because he's so fantastic. This right here looks a little bit more like computers. 
see a bit of the wax on the back. Um, overseas, when I see things getting cut, a lot of agates and jaspers, sometimes you can see like a green powder stuck into the stone. And it's not the dopping wax. Sometimes it's actually the chrome oxide. So in, in the States, we polish with Zam. Zam is a chrome oxide in some kind of greasy, waxy host. Well, overseas, they're just using straight up chrome oxide powder, charging it onto different things. Oh, there's a whole nother room I didn't even know about. Dang, oh dang, oh dang. I didn't even know. Good thing we're gonna be here for a couple days. Here's something you almost never see, folks. Um, Sujalite necklace. You waste so much material processing beads, 70% or more sometimes, especially to make those rondelle beads. I've only seen it one other time and it was from that Kurt gentleman. Uh, I have a video of him from Quartzite from years ago. Not a bad price, you know, it's already set up for jewelry, you know, it's silver clasp and stuff. But, um, and it is graduated. I wonder if when they process this, how many necklaces were they going to get out of it? Did they send away a bunch of lower end stuff? Because this stuff does look good, it doesn't have too much of the black material in it. Unfortunately, I would have to get three of those to get around my fat neck and make it look good. <laughs> but, that is fantastic. It's a cool little frog there on that wire wrap. Oh, it's just hanging out above the wire wrap. Is it Hopi Zuni or Danae? I don't know. But that's a cool looking frog. Definitely some kind of phosphate. Great taste. Um, do you know anything about the frog? Like uh, Judy. It's made out of turquoise, but it's not for sale. Oh, I understand. It's so eye-catching, though. It's doing its job. Yeah. Oh, you don't have to. I'm sorry. Is uh, It's probably made in America, huh? Yeah. Maybe, like, in the Southwest? Or... Actually, it's a uh, little kid in Oklahoma gave it to my wife as a gift. So that's why it's not for sale. This is also not for sale. Are oh, kids. nice. <laughs> the froggies. Oh, yeah. There's another one there. Um, how long have you had that Sujolite necklace? You almost never see Sujolite beads, even in, in any quality. Uh, a year and a half. Oh, not that long. Nice. 